Hello, and welcome to the Model Railroads and Structures Show. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Model Railroads and Structures Show. In this episode, we continue part three of Gil Mr. Cole by Laser Modeling 3. In the previous two episodes, we built the coal tower base and built the coal tower itself and added the decals. Um, in this episode, we'll be adding the roof access ladder and uh, some other parts, so enjoy. As you can see here, I'm adding the ladders to the side of the the coal tower. These are Titchy Tower or Titchy uh, ladders. Uh, they're they're kind of fragile because they're very accurate in their size and can break. And that's why I am attaching the ladder without painting it first. Um, I find that uh, if I I I'm able to uh, get my fingers on these things and uh, put them on before I paint them I'm able to come back and paint and weather them easier I'm using a generic rust colored paint for this from polyscale um, you could be could use oxide red primer uh, if you are painting this off the model, um, I uh, I just chose to use the poly scale because it's uh, it's brush ready and this it's what I need for this part of the process. Um, as you can see, I added the 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 protective cage to the ladder so that uh, uh, we can paint the inside of that before adding the the styrene strips that'll tie it all together into the full cage. Um, it's just a step-by-step -step process. And adding the final step, the styrene strip to complete the protective cage. I really like these titchy parts because they really do look accurate. I often find in older models that uh, you, you get a railing that is super duper thick and uh, it's so apparent that it's uh, out of scale and it, it puts the whole project out of whack when you have something that's out of scale like that. These titchy parts go, away, go a long way to helping you have a quality end product. So I took my time painting the ladder and uh, as you can see it is completed. It is completed with paint however uh, you know it's never really complete until you've added a bit of dirt. I'm gonna go back to my MIG washes here and add them behind the ladder and to all the cracks along the ladder. Uh, this will uh, allow the, the, the MIG, MIG washes, which is an oil, it's kind of like a linseed oil, and it will sit in all the grooves and cracks and stuff. It, it, will, tr it, it, will, it will also darken the middle parts of the pieces, but it congregates to the cracks and creases. And that's what makes this weathering solution uh, so perfect for this job.
And like I said, the dirt goes everywhere, so we're gonna add some some oily type dirt to our man access holes on the side of the tower here. Adding these pigments is real easy and uh, although you can add too much you know you you put a little bit on your brush and uh, dab it off and it, it really looks real realistic much more is it's got a much different look than powder chalks and uh, and although powdered chalks are are realistic for their own purpose uh, this this uh, process here I like to use these washes because it, it actually adds a little bit more realism than what I'm looking for in chalks I'm adding all the washes to uh, over the concrete, uh, not just on the ladders, because you know, like if uh, your your oily fingers and hands or the creosote on your boots from walking in the dirt and and all that stuff. Once the rain hits it, uh, you know the rain will get dirty. It's not washing oil down, but the rain will get dirty, and that will color the concrete below it and uh, you know we add the plug on top we uh, add some oil around that because that's where we congregate there too so now that the towers for the most part painted put together and weathered uh, it's time to start adding the 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 elevator for the coal to be brought up from the railroad to the coal tower to be stored. Uh, these are laser cut wood parts. Um, they're in a very f uh, thin uh, balsa wood. Using my weld bond glue, I'm going to be using the sticks provided to uh, uh, work these. Uh, pieces of wood together. It's important to uh, work these wood pieces of wood together without the paint on them because paint will penetrate the wood and warp it. So if we glue it together and let it dry and, and get it all square and structural, it'll warp less, if at all even. This kit comes with a number of different styles of wood. Um, uh, angled iron style uh, to mimic the iron um, T post to the the pieces I'm adding right now in between the angled irons adding these and gluing these to the structure before we paint it makes sure that we don't have any problems once we start adding moisture to the wood Moving along, on top of the coal tower, we have a little uh, shack for the for the machinery that pulls the the elevator up and down, uh, the pulleys and the the motors and the the electrical components and stuff. So on the outside of this uh, shack, we want to weather our wood. So what I'm doing is I'm using my uh, brass wire brush to um, add grain to the the wood walls. I'm doing it inside the sprue because that's uh, where I figure it is strongest. So I want to add a little bit more weathering and uh, uh, distress to the shack because it's going to be real old. They're not going to repair this or maintain its color over time. So I'm adding uh, knot holes to the wood with my razor blade. Uh, just add these in a varying different way. Um, sometimes you, uh, I'll take a black ballpoint pen to put a dark uh, mark in the middle of the knot hole to to make it stand out I didn't do that this time but you know sometimes I do
So now you remember this is a craftsman kit. These kits go over and above what normal kits uh, have. So this kit has the interior uh, studs on the walls as well as the machines. Uh, for the most part these are going to be hidden from the outside but they're there anyways uh, for the realism of the model. A common practice for craftsman kits is to uh, give you a template and uh, uh, have you build your wood pieces on top of the template. Um, what I use is a piece of toothpick and I just add a small smidgen of glue so it sticks to the, the paper so that I can add all the pieces to the, the template and uh, build it away uh, to scale. Uh, this is a great way to build and it, it's a great way to, uh, to, to work on your own kits. You can just photocopy these templates and uh, go at it. Uh, fine scale miniatures kits do this as well. It's easy. So when you're done building, the glue's uh, stuck to the paper. So you, you just grab the part and pull the paper away from the part. It actually pulls away really easily if you add just a smidgen of glue. As you can see, I painted the the elevator oxide red primer. I'm using Depot Buff for uh, my off yellow colors, and I'm using Tamiya uh, an army colored tan tan green uh, for the engine parts. As you can see, a lot of effort was put into adding interior, de interior detail parts to this uh, utility shed on top of the, the tower. Um, it has the, the pulleys, the motors, the, the shafts, um, the, con the power panels, everything goes on the inside of this thing. I opted to paint the wood deck and the the steel frame underneath it with the depot buff because the colors really ended up fitting and the it added a nice contrast to the build. Uh, a depot buff is what is an odd looking color that isn't a plain primary color of some sort, so it adds a lot of interest. And when you start adding dirt to it. It adds a lot of uh, realism to the color. Um, also, I didn't want to add uh, oxide red to the metal as people usually do because it would have started adding too much red to the mix. For the walls of the shack, I added a gray color base coat so that uh, a lot of the, you know, so so that I could come back with a sponge and sponge on some of uh, my over color. I'm using a uh, concrete color for the the wall paint, and as you can see, I'm using uh, a tight celled. Uh, 
sponge to just dab on some paint. You don't want to add super wet paint to the sponge as it'll add too much to the wall. Uh, what I like to do is, is dab it out and get the, the color to uh, just to do kind of a dry brush or a dry dabbing of the paint onto the wall so that it uh, doesn't doesn't add too much texture within the paint. I just want to make it look like it's been peeling off for a number of years. So friends, that takes care of another episode of the Guildmaster Coal Build. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to be building the base, uh, adding the, the coal bunker, as you can see, um, and doing a bunch of other stuff. Maybe we'll even get into building the wayhouse itself. Um, lots of interior detail parts are left to be added. Um, lots of uh, interesting scenic parts to be added to this build. Uh, craftsman kits aren't just the kit, aren't just the building. They're the whole scene, the whole enchilada, as they say. So until next time, thank you for watching. If you're not a subscriber already, please subscribe. Uh, it'll give you a hint of when I'm releasing another video. Um, if you like the video, press like if you would like. Um, if you have a comment, please comment on the video. Each week we do model building sessions where I'll be building parts of the Gilmister Coal. Um, uh, you can view those and uh, comment using the Q&A plugin that Hangouts has and all that jazz. So have a great day and thank you for watching my videos.